and gentlemen, your host, Craig Ferguson. My tie went crazy. My tie went crazy. <laughs> Welcome to the Late Late Show, everyone. I'm your host, TV's Craig Ferguson. Welcome to Los Angeles, California. <laughs> Los Angeles, California. That's right. That's right. Big news. Big news. A man has filed a lawsuit against the MGM casino for preying on his gambling addiction. He's suing for $500,000 on the Eagles winning the Super Bowl. I, I think he's got a chance. I think he's got a chance. <laughs> I'm Super Bowl crazy. I'm, I, I am. I'm super, I've got Super Bowl fever. The Eagles for me. That's what I'm saying. Look out for the angry bird. The Eagles to win the Super Bowl. The angry bird will have the warm. I don't care what you think, I'm telling you, the angry bird. Here, here's a story. Barry Williams, the actor who played Greg Brady on The Brady Bunch, is getting divorced. Aww. Yeah, very sad. His wife is demanding sole custody of the center square. Uh, no. <laughs> here's, the, here's the thing. Geraldo Rivera is in the news. Geraldo Rivera <laughs> says that Michael Jackson is completely innocent of the charges against him. So here's my question. Does an endorsement from Geraldo, does that help you or does that hurt you? Because I'm not sure. <laughs> the, uh... oh. the founder of the hip-hop record label Murder, Inc. Murder, Inc. <laughs> has been accused of laundering a million dollars in drug money. Now, please say that they first became suspicious when he named his company Murder, Inc. <laughs> Don't fly under the radar with murdering. <laughs> President Bush has plans to uh, shrink the record budget deficit. Today he put all the blue states on eBay. Every one of them. <laughs> Fair news for Starbucks, though. They're making a lot of money. Last quarter, Starbucks coffee boosted sales by 30%, earning $145 million. Starbucks employees cheered so loudly they were heard by other Starbucks employees across the street. Everyone <laughs> heard each other. I like a latte myself. I enjoy a latte. Ooh, I love a latte. <laughs> Tasty. I love a latte. No, not at this time of night, though. This time of night, decaf soy. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> if anyone's bringing one in, I'll have a decaf soy. And finally, there's a new medical condition called blackberry thumb. Uh, people get it when they strain their thumbs by sending too many of these wireless text messages. It's similar to known to the condition to adult video users known as fast forward thumb. Uh, <laughs> yeah, fast forward. Let's start the show. I'm very excited. Ice Cube is on the show tonight. How about that? I'm telling you, man. The biggest stars in show business, right here, show business. I phoned my mum this morning. I phoned my mum this morning. I phoned my mum every now and again. I'm a good lad. And she's, yeah, I know, I do. Come on. And uh, I phoned my old mum and I said, uh, how are you, Mum? She said, fine. She said, I've been on the show's website, she says. She gets on the internet and she goes to cbs.com and goes on, there's a little website for this show. Check it out. And, uh, <laughs> and my mum can use the computer. Oh, they've got computers in Scotland. And she said, uh, they have hundreds of them roaming over the hills. And they, uh, <laughs> my mum said, she said, oh, I see that icebox is on the show. <laughs> Box, Mom, it's Ice Cube. She said, oh, I'm so embarrassed. Don't you tell him I said that. <laughs> I said, well, what you, I, I'm going to die. What does it matter if I tell him? It's all right. She said, no, what if I run into him? <laughs> <laughs> it's Ice Cube, Mom. Oh, I could run it. 
What? Because she's coming out here in a couple of weeks. She's going to be on the show. And, uh... <laughs> she said, yeah. A couple of weeks, time. <laughs> she, but she's a bit worried about running into Ice Cube, because she said Ice Box. I think, I think you're all going to be, uh, you're all going to be disappointed when you meet my mum and find out she doesn't talk like this at all. <laughs> my dad, my dad talks like this. <laughs> yes, on the show tonight, actor and rap superstar Ice Cube is here. <laughs> in America. The number one movie in this great country of ours. Look at that, huh? I tell you, here's my tip, by the way. I'm going to tell you. Ice Cube, he is a fantastic actor. This is my tip. Within five years, if he, if he wants to, he'll pick up an Oscar. That's what I say. He's got gravitas on the screen. I'm telling you. Gravitas. Proper, he's got that thing. He knows he's got that thing that film stars do. He can stay still like that. See, I can't even do it, but he can do it, and that's where it will get him the Oscar within five years if he wants. If he wants. If he doesn't want it, he won't have it. <laughs> you know who else is here tonight? Punk rock legend Steve Jones is here tonight. And the Sex Pistols on the same bill. NWA and the Sex Pistols on the same bill. And we let these people in for free. <laughs> can, you, can you imagine? Can you imagine? Steve Jones is here tonight as well. Fantastic. He might get an Oscar in the next five years, but he might not. <laughs> That's a longer shot, I think. <laughs> Music tonight as well from the French Kicks. Fabulous band. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're right. Now, what's in this band here? What an amazing, an amazing assortment of sizes of people in a band. Look at that. There's some tiny little fellas here. Look at this fella here. Gigantic. He must play one of those big double basses or something. <laughs> we'll find out later. Right. Nominations for the 77th Academy Awards were announced earlier this week. We've been showing clips uh, from each of the films nominated for Best Picture. Tonight we have a clip from Martin Scorsese's biopic, The Aviator. Take a look at this. I was your captain speaking. <laughs> they will be flying from sunny Los Angeles to Houston, Texas, approximate flying time, three hours, 41 minutes. We know you have a lot of choices. Thank you for flying with us today. We hope you enjoy the in-flight movie. What is it? The Aviator. <laughs> No, 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 that was not the real clip. That was not the real clip from The Aviator. Now, come on, let's look at an actual scene from The Aviator. Come on. Thank you for flying with us today. We'll be serving pork. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hey, that guy. That Leonardo DiCaprio, he's handsome, isn't he? He's a handsome man, Leonardo DiCaprio. Let's have another look at him here. Come on, let's have another look. There he is. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Mm. Ah. A big news story today. Big news today. It was discovered that Nicole Kidman's home telephone was being bugged by the tabloid newspapers. That's absolutely true. It's shocking. Yeah, I know. It's scandalous, isn't it? Now, personally, I'm very conflicted by this. It's a despicable invasion of Nicole's privacy. But on the other hand, we have the exclusive audio tapes of the bunk conversation. Yeah, yeah, anyway. All right, all right. Let's play the tapes. Here are Nicole Kidman's secret telephone conversations. Let's listen. Hello? Yes, is this Nicole Kidman? Yes, it is. The Nicole Kidman, the, the famous actress? That's right. How would you like to get a better deal on car insurance? <laughs> Hello? Hey, Nick, it's Tom. What's up? <laughs> Listen, I didn't have your new number. Then I couldn't find a phone book. <laughs> then I realized I was sitting on it. <laughs> um, I'll call you back, okay? I'm in the middle of something. Hello? Hi, Nicole. It's Sean Connery. Are you busy this evening? Why? What do you have in mind? 
I was wondering if you'd like to come over to my place and shave my back. I'm a very hairy man, you know. I've told you a thousand times, Sean. I'll be there in a heartbeat, you giant fuzzy love muffin. Yes, okay. <laughs> okay. Ooh, those Australians. Oh. <laughs> Last night on NBC, I, I was quite creepy there when I did that, didn't I? <laughs> we have very creepy music we could play for me doing that. Hold on, I think I've got some. Hold on. Let's see. Mm. <laughs> I don't know why. You just got to do something to fill the time, really. Now, listen. Last night on N <laughs> last night on NBC, uh, the Today Show anchor Katie Couric hosted a primetime special on teens and sex. Uh, I don't know if you saw it. Some of the questions were very explicit. I thought the whole thing was uh, pretty uncomfortable to watch. Let's take a, l a little look. How do teenagers view oral sex today? <laughs> well, uh, 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 from everything I've read, it sounds particularly enjoyable. <laughs> Like today? Today? It's only 10 in the morning, but if he's cute. Usually I just look down. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Sometimes I close my eyes. Ooh. I think you probably agree with me that parents like myself are pretty much clueless. They were until they saw the pictures. <laughs> the video. On my webcam. What if some of your behavior needs to be judged? Judged? I'll give you something to judge. These are real girlfriends. <laughs> oh, God. A classically trained actor, you know. I'm so proud. Mate, right, uh, I'll tell you what. As many of you know, Condoleezza Rice was confirmed as Secretary of State yesterday. Now, when a big story like this breaks, uh, I like to take a look at how it's covered by the many different magazines that are sold in the newsstands. So let's take a look at how these magazines cover the same story in a feature that we call... Craig's Newsstand Review. Now, I think that it's wonderful <laughs> that the freedom of the press allows for these different perspectives on important news. For example, Time Magazine right here. Uh, took the Rice confirmation story and ran it on its cover, okay? Um, Us Weekly uh, picked up the story. They had a pretty original, uh, original take on it. <laughs> can, uh, can Condi get them back together, right? <laughs> One way to look at it. Um, here's an interesting one. Variety, uh, the showbiz newspaper. Look, uh, at least one more role for, out there for Angela Bassett, which is... <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Here's one, uh, High Times Magazine. Um, they, uh, you know, that's for the kids that enjoy the marijuana. Uh, you know, the old uh, skunkaweed. Uh, they don't always get things totally accurate in High Times. You see that? that uh, rice confirmed from president. Uh, Here's a, here's a, Iran Today uh, ran a big cover story as well. Uh, their story, uh, uh, we're so screwed, yeah, uh, yeah. And as ever, as ever, on the, uh, on the cutting edge of political satire, Mad Magazine, I think the cover just says it all. Yeah, they still got it after all these years. All right, we'll be right back with Ice Cube, everybody. The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson. Sponsored by Ambien. Get back into the rhythm of life. Talk to your doctor about Ambien. Welcome back, 
My lovelies, welcome to The Late Late Show. My first guest is a multi-platinum rap artist and a huge movie star. His new film is the comedy Are We There Yet? which is America's number one movie. Take a look at this. Oh, oh. Please welcome Ice Cube, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Hey. How you doing, man? The kids love you. You're the number one family entertainer in America. How about that? Ain't that something? <laughs> That's a good thing, man. It's a good thing. I mean, it's a, it's a good film, man. It's a nice family film. You know, you got to do something for the kids. Yeah? You know, you got to do something for the kids. Is that why you did it? Oh, oh yeah. Do yeah, it for the yeah, kids. Yeah, yeah. And a little money? And a little money. Come on, now. A little, a little money and the kids. Man, little kids get yeah, yeah. the parents to spend a lot of money. <laughs> But it's a, it's a bit of a departure from the early days, from N.W.A. to, uh, you know, the big family film in America. Did you, did you see yourself heading in that direction when you were writing, you know, that song about doing something to the police? <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I wrote, I wrote the police and then I wrote a kids movie the next day, so <laughs> I had it all planned out. Nah, nah. You know, I never thought that. You know, all I wanted to do back then would be was to be the best rapper in the world. Yeah. You know, that's it. And uh, I met John Singleton in 1990. He put me in Boys in the Hood. Yeah, it's lovely. You know, you know thanks, yeah. thanks. And from there, you know, you know, I, I just got caught up and, and started doing more movies. I, I produced my first movie, uh, Friday. Yeah. You know, Because I've noticed that the, the rappers, we, uh, Most Def was on uh, a couple of weeks ago on the show, and I was talking to him about this, that rappers seem to move very easily into dramatic roles. I mean, can I... Because yeah. I'm serious when I say but you really have got the dramatic chops. There's a lovely scene in the movie, was the, the comedy scene there, mm -hmm. there's a lovely scene in the movie where you tell the kids about your own father, you know, the yeah. character's own father, and it's a lovely dramatic scene. And you've got the chops to do that. I think you can get the Oscar if you want it. Why, why do you think rappers can move into the dramatic roles? What is it about that? I mean, you know, to, to, to excel in the rap game, you got to have a certain amount of charisma. You have to be very observant of people, situations, you know, because that's the reason why you've reached that level in rap, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to shine. And, and, you know, it just kind of translates easily to the, to the big screen or the small screen. We can pull it off, you know, we do a so pretty is good So it's job. like the, the, when, you're, when you're performing rap, it's a performance, an acting performance then, is it? Well, you know, it's, it's act, I mean, rap period is, is all about bravado, it's all about ego, it's all about uh, being witty, smart, you know, all them things combined. So you're trying to be all that. And, uh, you know, in movies, you get a chance to gauge your feelings yeah. and, you know, do other things, you know, so... It's a beautiful thing. Do you ever get any uh, any crap from the, the guys you were working with back in the old days about doing the big family movies now, moving on to the... Who, me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, everybody know my credentials. Everybody know if they want to, if they want to spit rhymes with me, we could do that any time. So, you know, I don't think... Nobody want to see me on the mic. You shape here. Huh? You're safe here. Yeah, you know. I, I don't want to spit rhymes with you. I, yeah, you know, you, you know, you, 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 I wouldn't dream of it. Okay. No, 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 no all right. I you touch keep it. it right there, Craig. You know what? You keep I, it right I, there. I, I, whenever I, you know, fly around the, the U.S. When you go to the Midwest, they've got these planes. They've got N.W.A. written on them. Yeah. Yeah, Northwest Airlines. They've got N.W.A. written on them planes. That's nothing to do with you, is it? No. <laughs> no, there's no, a lot of money in my that. planes. You know, I wish they were though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, well, you can, you can do that if you want. Yeah, you know, yeah. you know, but mine would probably say Cube Airlines, you know, that, <laughs> that's in the future, in the future, you know. After the Oscar. Yeah, if a boy can have Virgin Airlines, I can have Cube Airlines one day. What about, are you still, are you, do you still work in the music? Are you still working on music? Because your last album was out, what, 2001, 2002? Oh, yeah, the last solo album, but, uh, you know, I did an album with the West Side Connection. Right. You know, and then, uh, you know, I'm on, I'm on this little John album, Crunk Juice. You know, I know you got crunk juice. I know your mom's in Scotland is bumping crunk juice. You know? I, all the time. She all can't the get my name right, but I know she got crunk juice. <laughs>
you know? I know. My mom's very excited about meeting you. You should come back when she's here. That's cool. I mean, you know, I can show your mom's around L.A. You know what I mean? Put her in the six four. You know, bang around on the six four. You know what I'm saying? Oh! Oh! You know, I would pay a lot of money to see that, actually. Yeah, you know? I would like to, you and my mom going around L.A. would be something that... Yeah, put her in that six four and just, you know, hit the switch. What? What's, what's the six... What's that? The six oh, four. Oh, six four and pile of low rider. You know, I got to hip you up, man. I know. You know, you know I'm, I'm, I'm going to hip you up, man. Just stay in L.A. a while. I'll hip you up. <laughs> okay. Six four. Well, take me around in the foamy thing. Take me around in the foam, and, mm -hmm. and I'll do that thing. And then, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm right. gonna have to show you a little more about it. Yeah, yeah I'll yeah, do that. Little, um... It's not, it's, uh, it's not my thing. It's not. But you know, there's a lot of white guys doing the rap now, isn't there? They've got the Eminem. He's white. Yeah, 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 Eminem. Yeah. Do you think, you think rap is about, is about race, or do you think rap is about coming from uh, a background which is difficult? Neither. I think rap is about an art. It's a, you know, it's about music. It's about you know, br pretty much bringing the races together. You know, yeah. uh, ain't nothing really done it like <clears throat> hip hop. Uh, hip hop has brought all this about. Uh, you know, uh, getting you know, you know, uh, white families in to see a movie like Are We There Yet? You know, hip hop yeah. is you know, in some ways, responsible for the evolution of of you know, America when it comes to seeing entertainment together, doing things together, you know, coming out to the show together, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a good yeah. thing. Good. I want to talk to you more about that. We've got to take a break. We'll be right back. We have All to right. take a break. We'll be right back with Ice Cube. With Ice Cube. Now, listen, you've got you got kids now. You got you got four yeah. kids. Yeah, I got four kids. Four kids. Yeah. So do you find you find that like you're growing up the way you grew up. Uh, you grew up in South Central LA, right? Yeah. Uh, and your kids growing up is going to be a little bit different story, isn't it? A lot of bit different. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of bit different. You know, they got it going on. You know what I mean? They got it way better than I had it. So. Yeah. And what know? way do they have it going on? <laughs> I mean, just being the sons and. And, you know, my daughter, yeah. you know, they just get to, you know, get all the fly gear, the fly clothes. Get all, yeah, get all know. the stuff, yeah. You know, they, they partners get to come over. We got, a, we got a box at the Staples Center, so they invite their friends. You know, they just, oh, oh, really? they just got it going on. Yeah, no, that would... Actually, that's more than I got. I, 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 <laughs> box at the Staples You should Center. hang out with my I kids. I should hang man. out with you. Or your kids. Yeah, you hang yeah. out with you or your kids. Yeah, yeah. that'd be all right. Do you, do you choose projects now knowing that your kids are going to see it? Do you think about, I mean, when you're, you're, you're rapping and it's all attitude and you're a younger man and you're angry and stuff, does it change as you get older? you think about that? Nah, nah. No, no, no. No, they can hear the hard stuff. You know, they can get the, you know, this, are we there yet? You know, they, get, they just got to get it how I give it. You know what I yeah. mean? That's just how I am. Uh, you know, nobody kind of, you no know, measured what I got yeah. <laughs> for it, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like, you know, I turned out all right. How do you maintain the attitude of, you know, the, the energy that gets you going when you start rapping? How do you maintain that when you get the private jets and you got the, you know, you got everything going on? Well, you know, all my ties are, all my ties are still to South Central L.A. You, you, still, you still hanging with your yeah, old I friends mean, you stuff? know, uh, you know, I got, I got all kind of friends, but, you know, my family's there, and, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm not too far away from, uh, you know, just always having to deal with, with the struggle. You know, me personally, I don't have those personal problems, but, uh, you know, I, I always take this position to speak for people who can't speak for themselves, you know, and uh, that's what I do with hip-hop. It's a good thing to do. Yeah. A lot of stuff, man, you know, a lot of stuff, a lot of things going on with the country, a lot of, you know, neglect of, of what's happening in the country, you know, too much focusing on Iraq, you know, I don't like soldiers over there dying, mm -hmm. you know, all that kind of stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. I ain't with that. You gonna address all that in the new album? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah, you know. Yeah. The, the album is, will not be PG. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Don't Glad worry about it. that. I'm looking forward to hearing it. Congratulations on all the right, big man. movie. Thanks. Ice Cube, everybody. <laughs>
Welcome back, my lovelies. Now, my next guest helped give birth to the punk rock movement and was the driving musical force behind the legendary group, the Sex Pistols. Yeah. Yeah. Look at these fine young men. Look at that. These fine young men in 1976. Look at them. God bless them. <laughs> this man is coming up. He hosts a radio show called Jonesy's Jukebox on Indy 103.1 here in LA. Please welcome Steve Jones, everyone. <laughs> Hello, Jonesy. All right. Yeah. I'll have a latte. A latte? I like a latte. I brought you an album. You did? I just want to show you that English people ain't the only ones with bad teeth. Get a load of that bloke. Oh, Lord. What's that? Look at that. Scott Swahe with Jimmy <laughs> Nail. Closing. Uh, closing on the teeth. Look at the teeth there. Uh, that's, now, that's a Scotsman in 19... That, you know what's interesting? This is what was coming out of Scotland. I just noticed the date 76. in the back. 1976. So, the Sex Pistols in London, and in Scotland, Jimmy Nair. Everybody. <laughs> Where is he now? <laughs> when you first come to America with the Pistols, then? Uh, you? 77. It was a very successful tour, wasn't it? Well, it all depends how you look at it. <laughs> we did, uh, I don't know, like six shows or something like that. Six shows, that's not a long tour. Still. No, no, that's... no. What happened? Maybe it was more, it was a blur, but... <laughs> we, um, we broke up after that. Right. Cause... But weren't you always breaking up, though? You were no, no. Break... No, 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 that was it. All right, you broke up once? Time. That was it. But then you came back. We were only together four years. Really? And then it was... When, when did Sid is... die? Sid died when? After we broke up. After you broke up. Yeah. Well, that's handy. Because... Mm. Um, he couldn't play anyway, though. You could, you... He couldn't play anyway. He couldn't so, play? Uh, no. Sid? No. Oh, the kids don't like that. They don't like to hear that. No, he I had, know, though. He had great hair, though. He had very nice hair. Very nice hair. He looked the part. He looked the part. He did look the part. I remember seeing him. I don't remember seeing you, but I remember seeing him. I was kind of out of touch with reality myself. I was in the 100 Club. You were? In London, yeah, in Oxford Street, when you used to play. Really? Yeah. <laughs> now I'm confused. Don't be confused. Yeah, yeah. I, I was in the 100 Club in, in London, but the Damned were playing. Do you remember yeah, the yeah, Damned? Of course. Oh, they were a great band, yeah. weren't they? Yeah. I play them all the time on my. Uh, on Jones's Jukebox. On Jones's in Jukebox. Indy 1031. <laughs> 12 to 2, Monday to Friday. And that's. Uh, if folks are not in LA, how are they going to watch that? Well, you can get it on the internet. On. Uh, what? Yeah, FM. Right. No one's going to get that. No so one's going to get that. <laughs> People are writing it down. Say it again. Yeah, yeah. Say it again. Yeah. No, no, no. It's all right. But I, they can I, get I, it on the internet. Google. They Google you. They'll get it. Yeah. Yeah. There you are. No, no, that'll work. Google, Google away. How did you? <laughs> so if the band split up when you came to America, how did you make a living? Um. I didn't really, uh, I, I was, uh... Well, I had, a, I had a kind of living before the Sex Pistols. What did you do? I used to be a, a thief. A thief? Yeah. Oh, that's, uh, that's a fine profession for a young man. It was, uh, it was, it was, uh, it was not bad. Yeah. yeah. How, how, <laughs> did you take that up again? No, I stopped, hold on, no, I carried on in the Sex Pistols. Yeah. But I, um... <laughs> Uh, I, I stopped, I stopped uh, 27 years ago. You stopped thieving? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're not thieving and you don't know how to earn a living and you're stuck in America, what did you do? Um, <laughs> Can you tell me or should I move along? Uh, move along. Move along. <laughs> tell me about Jones's jukebox. Right. No, how did you make a living? I want to know. Um, well, I had another band called The Professionals. Oh, yeah, that's right. I remember them, yeah. That, that was OK, but at, at that stage of the game, I was a mess, you know, and I weren't into um, the music. It was just about getting high, and that kind of ruled my life for a while. And, yeah, me uh, too, for a bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, uh, 
everything's just focusing on getting high every day. And whatever your job or any kind of form of money you're making is was secondary. How'd so, you go with that then? I, I, you know, I hit a major bottom. Yeah? Yep. And then? Stopped? Yeah, reluctantly. Yeah. I know. When, I stopped, when, I, when I stopped drinking, it was only because I thought, if I don't stop, I'm going to die. Mm. Yeah. Well, Shame it, that, isn't it? It's a drag. Nice to be cheery, isn't it? It's nice to be cheery. What's wrong? What's wrong? What are you looking for? My mouth's dry. Oh, really? Here, do you want a sip of this? There you go. Scotch? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you all right? What is that? That's, uh, that's a, a beverage, what the kids call Diet Coke. <laughs> what do you think? You like it? No, you can keep it now. Oh, it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, yeah, yeah. So that's it. <laughs> Jones's Jukebox. You interview people on Jones's Jukebox, yep. don't you? What do you What do you interview them about then? Who do you interview? Who have you had on? I've had I've had it be a year. This uh, um, February tenth will be a year. I've been doing it, mm -hmm. and I've had many actors on, many musicians. I've had Gary Oldman on. Gary Oldman. Yeah. I've had. Uh, He's English. Yeah. 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 I don't think I've had any Scotch people. No. Well, what about this bloke? You should come yeah, on. Yeah. I'll come on. Yeah, yeah, but what about this bloke? <laughs> Jimmy Nair. <laughs> Have you ever heard of him? No. <laughs> no, I've never heard of him. But I, but I feel... He's a dentist now. <laughs> God bless him, I tell you. So how, how come you ended up being a disc jockey? What happened? You know, like, you know, life has funny twists and turns. And it just kind of fell on my lap, you know. I was not doing anything. All I was doing was kind of uh, living in Beverly Hills and... Uh, Lying by the pool, being massaged. Uh, yeah, all right, all right, yeah. I was trying the, to gild it a bit. Only the front part. Right. Um, <laughs> And, uh, you know... Yeah, yeah, that bit. Chester. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> there you go. Get it down, you son. Uh, yeah, that's better. I've got a weight problem. No, not at all. <laughs> Jukebox airs from noon to two every day, every weekday. Steve Jones, everybody. We'll be right back with French Kick. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Interview magazine called my next guest's new CD both uplifting and awesome. They're here tonight to play the title track, The Trial of the Century, from this album. Trial of the Century. That's not a CD. <laughs> Unless they're making CDs very big. That's... Why is it this big? It's an album. They've got an album coming out, kids. Please welcome the French Kicks, everybody.
thank my guests, Ice Cube, Steve Jones, and French Kicks. Join Craig tomorrow with Minnie Driver and Candace Bushnell. Good night, everybody. Sleep well. <laughs>